Hi, Rice here. We're gonna use Excel to build some graphs. And so let's take a look. If we look at the data that we have here, you can see right away that it's been labeled up at the top. There's a header and the header has the units, not in the numbers, which is good. Uh, also, you might notice that I asked you to do two or three trials for each location and I only have one. That's okay, it'll work completely the same. You don't even have to find the averages. Uh, but this info is really useful for us if we want to make a position time graph or a velocity time graph. And so we can do that all right here in Excel. Uh, but the first order of business is that we really don't have our velocity yet. And to get our velocity, we need to use this equation where we take the velocity of the ball and we find it by taking the diameter of the ball and dividing by the time in photogate B, the one that was lower on the track. So here's all of our times from photogate B and there's the diameter of the ball and we want to come up with our velocity which is going to be in units of meters per second so we can fill in the header. Uh, but then we want to do this calculation but instead of doing it all yourself let the computer do the work. So we want to take the diameter of the ball which is G3 and then I'm going to put dollar signs in front of both the G and the 3 that locks it in so it always looks at that cell because I always want to take the diameter of the ball and divide it by whatever time was at that location. So I have that and then I tell it to divide and then I click the cell that I want to have the time considered and I hit enter. Now it's important that I start with an equal sign so that Excel knows to do some math but it did it and you can see it gave me an answer. Now if I hover over this little black box my cursor turns dark I can drag it down and now I have all of the times or all the velocities sorry. Also, you can play around with your formatting a little bit if you're one of the people like me who likes it to look nice. Uh, so there we go. We've got all of our velocities all set up. Now it's time to make some graphs, and we love cool graphs. So here we go. First up, we want to we want to make a graph of our position time data. So I want to put position and time here. So here's my times, and I'm going to highlight those. I'm going to hi highlight my positions. And I'll do insert, scatter, I always want to do scatter, and then do this. So here we have our two data sets all graphed together. And if you look, this is across the bottom. These range from 0 to 1, which means that those are going to be my distances and my times are on the vertical axis. And that's fine uh, for some applications, but we really want time on the x-axis and position on the vertical axis. So we've got to do some work. So I'll right click here and hit select data. I actually want to remove the whole thing. And if I add it, now I can be completely in control of what happens. So I want to set my X values to my times and my Y values to be my positions. So now you can see it's updating the graph. I can even call this my position info if I feel like it. And there we go. Now I have a position time graph and you can see that that's position. I probably don't need that. And we've got this labeled across here. I can do some formatting things if I want. I can add a major grid lines for the vertical. Uh, and I can start to look at trend lines. You're going to need to play around with trend lines and see that this isn't exact. This isn't a linear graph. This has got something else going on here. So we're going to have to see exactly what that is uh, and play around with it until you're satisfied that it fits the trend. And this is something that we're going to look at quite a bit. But for right now, I'm going to close, and it's got a linear, even though that's, that's not what it is. So there's that graph. Let's fit this in here nicely. You can see there's some formatting issues that we can play around with, and all that just comes by formatting axes and grid lines and those things, and you should click around in that section of, the, of Excel. But we can also do a velocity time graph. I'll select time, and then hold down my velocities. I have to hold click control so that I can select multiple columns and then do insert another scatter plot like this and here we go. Now this one played out correctly. Here's my times across the bottom. Here's my velocities over here and so now all I have to do is make sure that this all gets labeled properly. I can get rid of that and we'll want to do things like change the layout of this table of this graph by adding like a chart title. So we can do above chart and call this my velocity time graph and so it's the velocity time graph maybe I want a space in there and we can start to add and you'll do this for both but horizontal axes title below we'll call this the time and label it in seconds 
And we can do the same thing on the y-axis with a vertical, and I like vertical rotated. And we'll call that the velocity in the meters per second. So it's always important that you label your graphs correctly uh, and you make it clear. And this one, if we add a trend line, you can see pretty clearly uh, that it is a linear trend line. And we can do a few things like display the equation and the R squared. R squared is just a measure of how accurate it is and it ranges from zero to one. So 0.9999 is really spot on. The, uh, the equation that was useful for us to take a look at also. And we can see how this position time graph would do the same thing. We just need to figure out what type of graph it is. So play around a little bit, build your graphs, and good luck.